The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, this is Rocio Monreal from SAGNI. Um, thank you for uh, attending today's webinar on Mailing Outside the Box. Today's presenter is Leslie Goldstein, Direct Marketing Specialist with the United States Postal Service. Um, Leslie is a 34-year veteran of the United States Postal Service. He is a U.S. Postal Service Headquarters Direct Marketing Specialist based in Pittsburgh. Leslie, thank you so much for joining us and for uh, presenting this informative uh, webinar for us. Oh, thank you kindly. I appreciate it. Um, let me ask you, can you see, everyone see my screen right now? Yeah, I'm putting it on right now for them. Okay. So go ahead and see click on show it. my screen. Yeah, that one. Oh, and I just wanted to mention to everyone, if you guys have questions along the way, please feel free to ask. I will be relaying the messages, uh, the questions over to Leslie as they come along. Um, this webinar is also being recorded, so um, that will be available. And if um, you have any requests from Leslie, um, there's this contact, contact information for future reference. Leslie? Absolutely. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to sit here and talk with everybody about uh, mailing outside the box. And one of the things that I always think about when I think about the mail is I go, why mail? You know, people really care about it. And the answer is, it depends. And, and I, you're going to find one of my favorite answers is, it depends. And I, I use that line all the time. And so what I'm going to actually talk about is, how are you? What are you doing to grow your business? Or do you understand your customers? What's in it for me? When I say that with the old W I I F M, I'm talking about what's in it for your customers. Um, breaking the paradigm of traditional mail as well, and and uh, some insights. I, I share lots of stories of different things that would have that have actually transpired with the postal service. Now, like. Uh, like was mentioned earlier, I am, I've been with the Postal Service 34 years, and it's kind of important to kind of bring that up a little bit because it hasn't been continuous. You know, for the first 20 years, I've been working with direct mail and doing all the things and traveling around the country working with companies. But then after 20 years, I quit the Postal Service. I went to work with an advertising agency, and after several years with that, I came back to the Postal Service, picked up where I left off, and now I'm out there doing what I do. Now, just to give you some idea, there are roughly 50 of me around the country doing what I do. Of course, now you're probably saying to yourself, what is it that I do? I work with different companies and organizations and help them integrate mail into marketing programs. And have you realized why it's important to do that? It's just another tool in your quiver and how to use it effectively and make money. I'm in, but interesting thing about this, we're not commission or anything of that nature. Yes, I'm a government employee, you know, one of those, one of the 600,000 postal employees that are out there in the, in, the, in, the, in the world. And I always tell people, I go, look, I'm going to give you lots of ideas and lots of different things that you can do. And you may say, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Let's go ahead and do it. And my answer is going to be pretty static. It's going to say, you know what? We're the United States Postal Service. All we do is deliver something from point A to point B, whether we're talking a three and a half by five inch postcard, which is the smallest thing you can put in the mail, or a 70 pound bowling ball, which is the heaviest thing you can put in the mail. So if you have relationships with vendors out there, keep using them. I, we never want to interfere or upset those relationships. If you don't have relationships, then we can make introductions and help you um, help, com help companies facilitate your needs and what you're trying to do. So with that all being said, well, what are you doing to grow your business? And, and you know, I put a small list of things up there, and I'm sure you're doing a whole host of things in addition to that. You're probably knocking on, knocking on doors, you're taking out magazine ads and, all, and whatnot and so forth in order to try to grow your business. But then I always tell people there are four ways in which a company can grow their business. It's real simple. First one is, and this is one that I have some questions about, is you can always raise your prices. It'll bring you more revenue. You'll grow your business. Yeah, but there's consequences associated with that too, such as 
people not wanting to you're not a low cost provider any longer or people would just say it's just too expensive but that is one way to grow your business the second way to grow your business is to acquire new customers and that's usually where about 80% of the people when they talk about marketing and advertising they're always trying to acquire new business and when I say grab that low hanging fruit that's out there but that isn't necessarily the most productive way to do it as well the third way though is to try to get your current database your current customers to buy more materials you know, that might mean the fact that you're now offering more product to them or being able to get them to up their order from a, a, a thousand dollar order to that fifteen hundred dollar order and it's six times easier to get business from an existing customer than it is to acquire a new customer and most people kind of lose that in the translation because everyone wants to say oh man I need to get a new customer I need to get a new customer meanwhile your current customers might be going out the back door to a competitor or whatever so you don't want to lose sight of who your current customers are because they're the ones who are really paying your bills and, and putting like say bread on the table now the fourth way is to reactivate old customers you've had customers that left you why did they leave and I always recommend with the, everybody who I'm working with is that is a source of information it's a wealth of information because they will tell you oh I got horrible customer service the orders were never on time <clears throat> uh, maybe the person died maybe they went out of business you know, but it's a wealth of information and it's important to know because it'll help you as you move further down the um, down the uh, chain so why mail well and it's a that's an excellent question why mail what does mail do well you know literally it's touching people every single day and one of the things I always tell people I go what's one of the f I ask people I should say what's one of the first things you do every day when you go home it's either going to be you or your significant other and it's the answer I always get you're right I go to my mailbox absolutely and there's actually a CEO of the mailbox too but I'm not going to get into those specific statistics but so what happens is you go to your mailbox and what happens when you open up that mailbox and you find nothing in there I always get four answers first answer yay no bills and yeah, I'm right there with them you know absolutely but even that le answer is becoming less and less frequent because more and more people are going online and paying their bills online um, another answer I always get is that one of those strange postal holidays where the post office doesn't deliver the mail like we just had on Monday on the 10th which was Columbus Day uh, the third answer and this is actually probably the second most common answer I get is nobody loves me you can get that feeling of oh man I didn't get anything how come and then the fourth answer I get is did the mailman not show up or misdeliver my mail but the fact of the matter is mail is like walking into a room and you flip the switch and you turn on the lights you expect to see something in your mailbox even if it's a piece of quote unquote junk mail that you sit there and say why did I get this and you throw it right into your recycle bin but people do expect it so in today's marketplace uh, there's fewer and fewer pieces of mail out there so why not capitalize on that wonderful way of trying to reach people and do people look at the mail absolutely you know the statistics are out there people like to be able to see mail they look forward to it they use it to organize their days to get ideas I know my wife sits there and looks at catalogs all the time to sit there and say I wonder if I have an idea I can come up with a present for it or whatever whomever it may, may happen to be but how did she originally get that catalog it came through the mail and and I know I work with several other uh, advertising companies and specialty companies and yeah I get their catalogs even at my office and I look at them and go huh I wonder if something like this could work or how it could be utilized so I want you to think about that at the same time as we're doing it but what's most important about all of this is what is Mel's job you have to be able to reach the right person at the right time with the right message and not only that you have to be able to solve a problem now again mail is nothing more than the vehicle 
reaching that person to whom you're trying to uh, entice as a prospect or you're utilizing them as a suspect. But you want them, you have to be able to be able to solve a problem for them because that's what marketing and sales is all about. So if I were to, and I say talk about the right audience, well, you have three things that you have to think about when it comes to marketing. You have your list, you have your offer, and your creative. And of those most important, of those three things, the most important thing is your list. And who is the list? It's the audience. That is who it is. For example, I have no little children in diapers, and I'm not wearing any adult depends or things of that nature. But if Procter and Gamble were to send me some Pampers, that would be a piece of junk as far as I'm concerned, because it's the I'm not the right audience. It might be the right time. Who knows? But it's definitely not. I'm definitely not the right audience for it. So you have to think about who your customer is, who within that organization that you're trying to capture in order to sell some of your products and wares, who might that be? And you may not be able to know who the right individual is, but nothing else, worse comes to worse, you should, you should be able to obtain the appropriate title for that individual in order to do that. So what else are people using in terms of working, uh, how are they uh, integrating mail? Well, for the most part, like I mentioned earlier, people are using it for acquisition purposes. And as you can see by this chart, this pie chart I have, you know, it's not the only thing. If I were to sit there and say, you know what, I think you should be using mail and mail only, you would tell me, you're crazy, I don't want to talk with you, get out of my face, and I wouldn't blame you one iota. But it is an important element. And then the other aspect, too, is in terms of the retention, in terms of how, what do you do to keep that person? And I'll give you a prime example, too, with this would be the casinos that are out there in the marketplace. They don't use mail at all to try to capture someone to come into their, into their room or gen, um, the, the casino floor. So what happens is they're using television, they're using radio, they're using newspapers or p uh, billboards in particular, and they're trying to get people to come in to the casino. But once, they, once you've gone on and you've uh, registered so you can get your loyalty card or whatever, they're utilizing the two most important things in this case would be email and direct mail in order to keep you coming back. Now, how does this all play out into your industry? It's no different. It's no different. You need to know who your customers are and what are you doing in order to try to capture them and get them moving further. Now, one of the nice things, I, or I'm not going to say it's a nice thing, but uh, I always hear people tell me, yeah, you know what? I've tried mail and it doesn't work. And in a very self-serving fashion, I tell people, it didn't work because you did not have me working with you. Now, I say that, like I said, in a very self-serving way, but it's true because of those different elements that I mentioned before, uh, the list, the offer, and the creative, most people aren't thinking about that. They sit there and say, most people are putting their direct mail piece out there, and it's all about them, not about the customer. And, and I'll give you a prime example. I was working with a personal injury firm, a pretty large one here in western Pennsylvania, actually. And the person said to me, the CEO of the company said, no, I tried the mail. It doesn't work. And, of course, I told him, guess what? It wasn't working because you didn't have me working with you. And then he said, let me take a look at the piece. So he showed it to me. And it said, beautiful picture of him standing behind a uh, wall of Abraham Lincoln, or just in front of a wall with Abraham Lincoln on it, or portrait. And it said, if you get hurt on the job or if you get hurt in an accident, here's my phone number. Here's my office number. Here's my email address. Oh, and by the way, I offer free parking. And I said to him, I said, what did you expect to have happen? And his answer was, I wanted my phones to ring off the hook or I wanted people to be coming in. I said, why would somebody want to use you as opposed to your competitor? What is your point of differentiation? And it took him a couple moments to figure that out. And he realized, oh my, you're absolutely right. He said, we're all the same. I said, yeah, you are. So what is your point of differentiation? And usually when I ask people that question, I say, what differentiates you from your competition? 95% of the time, I write the answer down before I hear it from my audience. 
And what do they usually say? Service. And I kind of gag at that when I hear that because service can mean so many things. In, in your industry, it could mean the fact that, that you're going to be able to do the turnaround on that particular item that that person wants and have it to them within three days. Uh, to someone else, it could mean I expect when I make a phone call, I get a live human being on the phone as opposed to going through the litany of having to press one, press two, press three. So service means different things to different people. So one of the things you have to think about is what is your point of differentiation? And if you're going to say it's service, define it. Figure out what it is. Now, why mail? I hear the other excuse I always hear about mail is it's too expensive. Well, I'm going to have to agree. It is expensive. That's if you're trying to get eyeballs to look at something. You know, you compare it to a billboard, compare it to television. Yeah, mail is expensive in terms of the eyeballs that it's actually reaching. But if you're reaching that right audience with the right message at the right time, mail will deliver a strong return on your investment. And according to the Direct Marketing Association, that ROI on that is for every dollar that's spent in direct mail, you're actually going to get back $12.53. So, what do you have to worry about? I mean, take a look at this. Here's what's going on. You think about it. You get up in the morning. You're probably brushing your teeth. You may have the radio on. You're hearing all these commercials on the radio. Uh, you go downstairs for, for breakfast. What's happening? You're probably having the news. You probably either have the television on for the news or you're reading the newspaper. And then you jump in your car. Again, you're listening to the radio. You're driving down the road to go to your office and you see all these billboards. So all in all, the, person, the average person is exposed to almost 3,000 messages per day. And really, what do you pay attention to? And the average is actually 52. But even still, you only remember four of them. And remember what I said before about the fact that mail right now, because of the Internet, the mailbox is not full. So the average person, the average household, is only getting about two and a half pieces of mail per day. And again, and compare that to what you're getting on, a, on an email basis. So the mailbox is not cluttered. It has the ability of being able to stand out. And that's what I tell people. It kind of breaks through the clutter. But do you still want to be using social? Do you still want to be using the Internet? Do you still want to be doing email? The answer is absolutely you do. And as I said, it starts breaking through the clutter. And this was a re research study that was done by Millard Brown oh, about four years ago, and they were just trying to figure out how does mail work with relationship to digital processing, and it had to do with the brain. And they found out that the brain has a larger capacity to understand the mail. Well, if you think about it, that makes logical sense, because now what's happening is not only are you seeing something, but you're now physically touching it. And I'm going to come back to that in a few moments, just so you realize about the physicality as well as the visual visuality. I guess that's the right word about mail. Comparing that to processing things via the, uh, digitally, you can, that little blue dot that you're looking at is an actual processing center within the brain. And when you're reading a, uh, when you're reading an email or looking at something on the internet, it isn't as pronounced and it doesn't make as lasting of an impression. But because we are what we are in this society today, believe it or not, the average attention span now has dropped drastically. And when I see this, when I, see it, when I first learned this statistic where the average attention span back in 2003 was 12 seconds, first of all, I didn't think that was much either. But then to find out today's marketplace because of the way people are looking at things and we want things instantaneously, it's only five seconds. And then I thought about it a little bit further because we are a fast-moving society. And I, I sat there and I, I thought about some older movies that I used to watch. One of those things was The French Connection. This was a movie that won the Academy Award. And so I said, oh, let me watch it again. I hadn't seen it in a long time. And I watched it and the second time. I couldn't sit through the whole thing. I'm going, this is just so slow-moving. But we've, come a, we've become a society whereby now you have to look at things instantaneously. So, but again, what happens is mail offers that physica physicality. 
I'm not sure if that's really a word, but I like it, so I'm going to be utilizing it. So again, what makes up what makes up a direct mail offering? Again, I mentioned before the list, the offer, and the creative. Not to mention you. You're part of that. You're part of that equation at the same time. Uh, I've talked about the list. You need to know who your appropriate audience is. Sometimes a person doesn't know. Well, believe it or not, one of the things you can do is you can take a look at your current database, your current customers, and you can figure out who are your customers. And I'm not even talking about the individual, whether it's you know, John Smith or Mary Brown or whoever it happens to be, but what kind of company is it? Uh, how large of a company is it? Why do they utilize things from you? And there are companies out there that will take your database based upon your customers and they'll profile them and come back and say, here are your, here, this is a profile of your ideal customers, the one who spends the most amount of money with you and it keeps coming back to you time and time again. And so one of the things I always tell people is what you want to do is find more of those same types of like customers because they're the ones who are buying from you. You want to find out more of that same universe that's out there. But then the offer, the WIIFM. And again, I feel like I'm kind of recap or, or restating some of these things, restating the obvious if you really come right down to it. But it's so true. What's in it for them? They need to figure out. It's not about what you have. And a lot of times I call that menu board advertising, where you sit there and say, you know, I offer ink pens, I offer mugs, I offer T-shirts, I offer uh, stress balls. If I can say these three things when I'm looking at something from a from a marketing standpoint, it's never about me. If I can say big deal, so what, or I should hope so, you're you're not offering anything for that individual. I've been in business for 40 years. Big deal. I offer the largest array of products. So what? Um, Again, what's in it for them? In other words, you have to figure out what it is that you're going to be able to offer them because they're the ones who are, who you're solving a problem for them, and that's what you want them to do. Now, this next portion I want to talk about for a moment is the creative. It's capturing one's attention. Here's what I tell people when you start looking at something that comes through the mail. It's right hand, left hand, trash can. What does that mean? Well, if you think about this, whether you're at work or whether you're at your home and you're sitting over a garbage can, usually how people sort their mail, they'll take the first piece, they'll look at it momentarily, and they'll say, oh, here's a magazine or a catalog. I'm going to look at this a little bit later, and they put it down. And they look at this other piece, I don't know what this crap is, and they put it right in the trash can. And again, it goes from the right hand, left hand, trash can. Your job as a marketer or in this case, since you're trying to sell your advertising specialties, is you want to capture one's attention. Well, can you do it with a postcard? Absolutely, you can. But again, what's in it for them? However, you can also do it with another aspect. And I'm going to get to that momentarily here. And you know, this is one of my... If anyone ever saw the movie The Graduate, you know, there it is with uh, Anne Bancroft and... Dustin Hoffman, but it's a matter of integration. What can you mail? Well, the answer is very simple. Bigger is better. There's no doubt about it. So if you're talking about a postcard, why don't you go make it a 12 by 15 postcard? I guarantee you, and that's a play, I call that a placemat. You can really be in, be in front of somebody's face with that. It could be a multiple colors. It could be a, a rainbow. You know, so there's a whole list of things that you can do from that whole element. And I want you to realize that. Now, the next slide is kind of interesting. Every single thing you're looking at here is something I have actually worked with with customers of which you can put through the mail. Now, I tell people and there may be some folks out there who have heard my presentation in the past. There's only two things that stop you from putting anything in the mail. And there's some limitations. But for the most part, there really isn't. What are those limitations? 
Well, the first one is your budget, and that's kind of obvious. But the second one is your imagination. You can get as crazy and as wild as you want, and you can get it into somebody's hands. If you look in the middle left-hand side, you probably can't tell what that is, but that's actually a coconut. And I was working with a company that was a B2B company. They wanted to have a seminar. And they wanted, they, they sat down with me and they said, hey, Les, you know, we know we want to do this seminar and we want to build the idea around the TV show Survivor and with the, with the Caribbean motif and everything. So I sat down with them. I said, how big is your budget? And they said, well, we don't have a budget. I go, what do you mean? They said, if we like the idea well enough, we'll find the money to support it. So after a day or two, I came back with them and I said, I've got an idea for you. I said, why don't you put a coconut in the mail and tell the person pointing to my head with my finger, tell them to use their coconut. They loved it. They thought it was a great idea. And they said, but can't, are we allowed to put a coconut through the mail? I said, look, I work for headquarters with the United States Postal Service. You can put this coconut through the mail. And so what we ended up doing was, I said, and they said, of course, they said, well, we're going to have to put this in a box. I said, no, you're not. I said, we want the impact of that coconut to be there. So what we did is we actually put it in a mesh bag. We put a, a metal grommet on it, and we put their collateral material where you can see the postage and the address on that piece there. But again, this was something we could do. Now take a look at the one right above it. That's a, it's a pill bottle. Cure for the Wintertime Blues. It was a uh, theme that was being used by a university. And we talked with the idea of saying they, ha they had a um, theater arts department. That was their theme, the Cure for the Wintertime Blues. It became a prescription bottle. Can you put it through the mail? That went through the mail just the way you see it. In the opposite right-hand corner, well, Pittsburgh about uh, two, three years ago, there was the big duck, and I don't know where it is in, in, in today's marketplace, but we had that going along, and it was what, like three stories wide, high by two stories wide, and so a company said, hey, let's see, can we actually take one of those stress balls in the shape of a duck and put it through the mail? And the answer was, yeah. And they actually tied the collateral material right around the neck of the duck, and it went through the mail just the way you see it. So all these things went through the mail just the way you see it. Now the bowling ball did not, you know, that was, but I wanted to show you that you can put the bowling ball through the mail. And then in the terms of the artificial limb that you're seeing there, yeah, yeah. You know, you want to grab onto something, this was a way to do it. And it was kind of cool for Halloween because now people were putting it in their front yards for the, for the uh, holiday that was coming up. Now what you're looking at in the middle where it says cover entire neighborhoods, that's actually a pop-up cube. That went inside an envelope, but when you opened up the envelope, it just flew right out at you. And I can't tell you how many people were scared to death when they, when they first saw that. So the point I'm really trying to make behind all this is you know, you're, you're only limited by two things of which you can put in the mail, your budget and your imagination. But just to kind of give you some idea about, and I'll go back to the coconut again, that coconut between the postage, the purchasing of the coconut, the collateral material, um, and putting it all together, the kidding of it, as I like to call it, probably cost that customer, I think it was about $7.50 or $8 per piece. They mailed out 5,000 coconuts. They got 40,000, no, excuse me, I take that back. They got a 40% response rate from that. 40% of the people they sent it to actually said they were going to come to this seminar. And all they needed out of that, those people coming to the seminar, were two sales out of it, and they more than made their money back out of it. So one of the things I'm always looking at is, yeah, is it expensive up front? Absolutely. I won't argue that. But now you have to come back and look at the old ROI, the return on the investment. And that's where mail becomes very, very cost effective. It was, it was funny because it was about, oh, about a year ago I was making this presentation or something similar, of it, but I was talking about the coconut. And a gentleman in the back room kind of raised his hand. He said, I wouldn't have paid any attention to that coconut. I said, okay. 
made sense to me. I said, I asked the gentleman, I said, so what industry are you in or what company are you from? And he told me and I said, let me, I hate to tell you this, sir, but you never would have received one of those coconuts in the first place. You weren't part of the target audience. So again, what, what gives you the, the, such a positive return on the investment is reaching the appropriate audience at the right time with the appropriate offer, the what's in it for me. And I'll sit there and I'll work with every and any company on the idea of let's talk about it. And I'll, I'll do a lot of evaluations on pieces and ideas and, and brainstorming with individuals just to try to make sure that you have what you need to do. Now I'm going to take it to something else. Back in the year 2000, this was kind of interesting, back in the year 2000, uh, the Direct Marketing Association, it was, in the year 2000, it was the change of the millennial, the millennium, and everyone was asking, what was the best direct marketing piece of the millennium? And this is it right here. It was the Wall Street Journal. And this piece was actually created back in 1988 for the Wall Street Journal. And they're still using it today. And if you take a look at the piece, and it says on a beautiful, clear day, these two young men, and I'm just going to paraphrase this. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. It said these two men went to, went to high school together. matter of fact, they went to the same college. They both got engineering degrees. They both ended up working for the same company. And one of them today is the senior, senior vice president, and the other one is a manager in a different department. One of them read the Wall Street Journal. You know, pretty basic. So, and if you take a look at this piece, this is the original piece from back from 1988. It was a black and white piece. Yeah, it had some blue highlights in there, and it had a response card. And the idea was subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. So what happened then, the Wall Street Journal got this piece, and they, and they got a certain response rate from it, and they thought this was great. So they said, what can we do to improve upon that response rate from this? So what they ended up doing is they said, let's try putting in a different color. This now became what's called the control piece. And everyone was testing it against what this would draw. Color did not change it. The original black and white that you're seeing outdrew the color piece. They said, well, let's put some pictures in there because pictures are supposed to be really good on direct mail pieces. This piece still outdrew the pictures. They said, well, let's change the format. Let's make it smaller. Let's make it wider. They tried doing all these different things to this particular piece, different tests, in order to see if they can outdraw the control piece. Nothing ever outdrew the control piece. So this piece was actually the piece that was received or, or uh, anointed the, the, direct market, the best direct marketing piece of the millennium. So it's, I just think it's kind of interesting because people think you have to get real elaborate and you have to get real fancy. No, you don't have to. And this was a this was actually a four-page letter. You know, there's letters there, there's there's verbiage on both sides of this piece. And people go, my God, this is so long. You know, if you have something good to say and you say it well, it doesn't make a difference how long the piece is, as long as you're reaching the right audience. Remember, coming back to that. The right audience is who you want to be going after and making sure you know it's something that's going to be in it for them. So with that all being said and done, what are some of the takeaways out of all of this that we're talking about today? Well, you need to know your audience. You need to, again, I'm going to stress upon that. I'm going to stress upon it and stress upon it. You need to say something well. Yeah, if you don't have something to say, then why bother wasting your time? You need to make sure that you're able to address the WIIFM to those individuals. The other thing is you want to test. Don't be satisfied with the results that you're getting. You always want to be testing something else against it to see if you can get a better return on the investment. And again, you have to have a product that's going to offer good value at a good price. Then the other thing you always have to do too is you ask for referrals. Now, word of mouth is by far your best form of advertising, bar none. And there's nothing wrong with asking for referrals. You'd be surprised what people will do. Matter of fact, I've had people put me on their website, sit there and say, hey, you know what? I want people to realize you're out there and you're able to help them. So they'll do that. 
and there's no reason why you can't ask for someone to sit there and say, do you know someone else who can use a product or a service? You know, I'm, I'm working with a, co a company right now that sells cookies. And what do they do is they put cookies in a paint can and they mail the paint can just by itself as a paint can. You know, the label's on the, on, actually on the handle of the paint can. And so this was woman who's the CEO of the company sat there and said, boy, this is great. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Let's do this. And so I've said, I said, well, do you know of any other companies out there that can utilize my services? And so she says, sure. And so she's turned me on to like three or four different other companies who I'm now sitting down and helping them with that whole aspect. Now, the point is, again, remember, I'm not a commissioned salesperson, so I'm not looking to sit there and say, I really want your business. But I'm trying to get you to realize there are things that you need to be doing that's going to help you get more business for yourself. Again, you're only limited by your imagination of what you put in the mail. And uh, I guess what I'm really willing to do right now, I'm a little... I'm willing to open this up for questions if anybody has anything. Please feel free to type any questions that you have in the question panel that's here um, located on your um, GoToWebinar screen. Um, thank you, Leslie. Not a problem. Now, what I really like about this one particular cartoon is, think about this. Remember what I said, what's in it for me? Ladies' night, there's nothing in it for them chocolate night ah. and again I, I like to look at some of these little things like this that are out there now one of the things I'll also let you know is I have a little email marketing newsletter I send out I do it about once a month maybe once every six weeks because I sit there and I try to write this myself and sometimes the topics are difficult to come by or they don't the uh, the ingenuity doesn't come up as frequently as I'd like it to but you have my email here and I would love to be able to put you on that list so if you would like if you would like to start receiving these just drop me a line and let me know say hey, put me on the list and see what's what I'll be glad to add you Excellent. and I'm Thank hoping you. I'm addressing the things that everyone's looking for Hope so too. Um, Leslie, you have my email address. If you'd like to, um, can you please put my email? Absolutely. In there? I will be more than happy to. So, um, if anyone has any questions, right now would be the time to ask them. Um, if not, you see, um, you can see Leslie's contact information there as well, or you can email me. Um, again, this webinar has been recorded. I think uh, it was quite informative. We're not using uh, snail mail, as I will call it, uh, as we should be. Um, anymore. Um, if anyone um, would want to reach out to us, let us know. Um, Amanda uh, sends her regards. Uh, she said, this was wonderful, Leslie. Uh, she says, thank you so much for the ideas and details and information. It was very nice of you, Amanda. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate hearing that. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, and Frank Lombardo wants to know if we can send them this presentation. Uh, if he shoots an email to me, I will be more than glad to send it to him. Okay. Frank, please email Leslie for uh, the request um, for the presentation, okay? Um, any other questions that are lingering now? Oh, you're welcome, Frank. Have a good one. I think that's it for today, uh, Leslie. Thank you so much again for uh, doing this presentation on the United States Postal Service and what uh, we can be doing to increase and help our businesses. Well, I appreciate and, it. And great. Everyone have a great afternoon um, and we will be in touch. Take care. Bye now. Bye, Leslie.